Hey guys, how are you doing? Welcome to the second part of the video where I share some of the teachings from nature that somehow I grasped over the years. I'm Alex Beldin, I dedicated years in the front lines of wildlife and nature conservation. And during this video, I'm going to share with you some of the teachings from nature directly, but also teachings from other people. Because we, as humans, are also part of nature. And the more connected we feel and live to the nature, the better it is. I've dedicated years traveling to some incredible places. I'm Alex Belby and I'm a wildlife photographer. Beauty on Earth project, it is a tribute to the planet, where I hope, through photography, to convey the beauty of the species and the place they have in the world, and try to help protect them, but also show the impact we have on them and their habitat. Support the project by choosing a membership on Patreon. So probably one of the most important teachings from Mother Nature is that in order for us to receive the teachings from her, we have to place ourselves in the position to receive the teachings from her. And what I mean with that? We live more and more disconnected lives. Often living in big cities with a lot of air pollution, noise pollution and many other types of pollution. So what can we do? We intentionally create or schedule the time for a 30 minutes break, or more if possible, in a natural place. Do you live in a big city? Where is the nearest park or garden which you can access? And while there, maybe without music, try and listen to the birds and the sounds around you, and try and stay present if possible. Talking about, you know, an anthropocentric point of view of the world and I would like to tell you this story of uh, a friend of mine, Gina. <laughs> Hi Gina, and thanks for sharing this with me. Uh, but actually, Gina had a very good point. And she told me that, you know, we call the character or of other animals as personality. You know, the personality of the sea turtles, of the personality of the lion, or the personality of the whales, etc. But if you look at how the word is composed, it's person. It comes from person. So, a more, a better way to, uh, if we consider us as a part of creation and not just, you know, filtering everything as throughout, like we are at the top of everything, a better way would be, you know, uh, the, instead of a personality of uh, a lion, a lionity, maybe, or, you know, of the personality of uh, orangutan, an orangotaneiti or you know the personality of uh, you know a whale a whaleiti <laughs> you got a point right because even if like these are not very good examples uh, the, what's important is really the concept okay because instead of having things always you know, labeled through us. We should live like we are part of everything else. So I think this is a more fair of seeing life on Earth. So not just considering everything like through ourselves, but to see ourselves as part of creation. I think this will help us to be, you know, also more happy, I think, because, you know, if we consider everything as through us, then it makes us selfish. And it just, uh, you know, feeds our ego. And I think this is, can be also very destructive, and we can see that. And another thing I, I notice is, you know, a lot of articles out there and a lot of people saying and including myself sometimes I I say like you know our oceans or our coast or uh, our planet but 
this is not <laughs> this is not really ours, you know. We we are just you know passengers here, like all the other species, and we are sharing this home. But this is not our home. This is the home of all the species. It's not just our home. And I think you know every time, and I'm I I making myself this mistake too because sometimes now I try to correct myself but in the past I used to say like you know our oceans because it came natural for me because that's what we hear all the time so we should stop like repeating things just because we hear them we have to think oh wait why do I say like our oceans because you know the ocean is belongs to the planet <laughs> doesn't belong to us they were here before us and they will be here if one day will not be here as well. So I think we should stop thinking that we own everything. So you see how autodestructive these concepts are for the simple fact that we consider everything as ours. Instead, let's consider it, you know, as it belongs to the planet. And I think the indigenous communities, they really understood that concept very well. And we shouldn't take it for granted and we should respect it, respect it and take care of it. That's a much better way, don't you think? It's just my opinion, you know, you don't have to agree, agree with me. It is, these are just opinions and uh, f some facts as well, but you know, then you don't have to agree with me. Just, you know, receive the information and then process through your own mind and then see what's good and what's right and what not and filter it. And that's what you should do in, with information in general. Don't just listen to what, whatever they say out there. Process it through your own mind and through your own ideas and arrive at a conclusion. Basically, you know, we have to think of with our own head. Moving forward, you know, many people ask me, oh, it is not dangerous to document wildlife. And, you know, honestly, <laughs> after, you know, all these years documenting wildlife in the front lines in their natural habitat, uh, actually the only threats uh, came from humans, from other humans. Honestly, you know, as long as you respect wildlife, you respect their territory, their space, they are fine because, you know, they are very focused on their duty. They have better things to do than, uh, you know, they're just, you know, attacking you or whatever. And then it depends on, on the species because, of course, if you go, uh, you know, some species, they are very territorial. If you are in their territory, if they are, you introduce yourself, uh, you know, aggressively in uh, when they are mating or maybe when they have with their babies, they, of course, they don't know, maybe they might think that you hurt their babies and they, they try to defend themselves. So, of course, we need to have education and knowledge about the behavior of the species. But if you respect all these things, things should be fine, you know. But to put it the other way around, <laughs> we, we are the biggest threat to the natural world, to the wildlife, because look at the deforestation, look at the pollution, look at the plastic pollution, and many other, a huge amount of other factors of our impact. And you know, the more I study it, the, the more I discover like, man, it's, there is so much. Really, really, we are hurting the planet so much. A, on a huge scale that is not even like... I think the facts are actually very conservative of... Like the situation is much worse than it's put out there. The ocean ecosystem is suffering a lot. You know, the ocean ecosystem is essential for a healthy planet. So the ocean covers over 70% of the surface of the planet. Now let's put it differently. Do you think 
70% of the surface of the planet is important. The ocean needs time to recover. There's no way around it. And a very efficient way to help the ocean, if you want, is to stop eating fish. Before we move on with the video, I would like to say a huge thank you to the people that are part of Beauty and Art family on Patreon. Thanks a lot, guys. In case you'd like to know more details about Beauty and Art family, please check the link in the description below. Thanks a lot. I would like to talk about the umbrella species. I think it's a very, also a very important topic, a very important point to, to mention because, you know, many, many people don't know about it. I didn't know about it at first when I got into conservation. I, uh, you know, I learned it along the way. You know, it might seem like a very simple concept, but actually it's very, very important. And basically the umbrella species are species selected for making conservation related decisions. Typically because protecting the species indirectly protects many other species that make up the ecological community of its habitat. For example, by protecting the territory of the jaguar, you protect all the other species as well. Of course, if the rules are respected. So, in simple words, the umbrella species is by protecting the species, many other species are protected as well. So, during these years, while documenting and helping the conservation of the species, I met real heroes, from big or small organizations to local communities and individuals. They are real heroes. And you know, I honestly often think, you know, you look at the young kids, including myself when I was a kid, I had like a hero uh, invented character. But why is that? Don't you think it would be more fair for, you know, our kids, I don't have kids yet, but, <laughs> you know, for kids in general to have, you know, I, I have nephews, I hope they, they will eventually be different, but don't you think it's more fair for them to have as heroes, you know, real characters that would eventually inspire them to take action, you know, because out there, there are real people who saved a lot of lives every day and yet nobody talks about them you know I think these are the real heroes and you know kids should be you know educated to understand why it's so important that and maybe inspire them and shape them you know for you know so in the future they will be real heroes themselves some of them you know they have been done this for over like 30 years you know fernando manzano for huge amount of years he was there in the front lines and he helped the, the species you know the camps ridley and now the population of the sea turtle is growing and they recently had the naribada as well and then, you know, Carlos Delgado, who studied the sea turtles and, you know, helped the conservation for many years. Carlos Delgado Trejo. And then, you know, Carlos Bonilla, dedicated many years to protect the military Macaos. You know, there are some real heroes out there who dedicated their lives to protect the species and help their conservation. Don't you think it would be a more fair way to have kids, you know, as their idols, like real heroes who help, uh, you know, real lives every day. So last but not least, we live on the most beautiful planet in the knowing galaxy. So I truly believe that we should come all together and treat it better. And we can do this by taking care of the actions which we do every day. From what we consume, what we wear, and how we treat the trash. And I think we should take real action, not just nice words. 
You know, the nice words and nice posts on social media, yes, they're okay, but they are not enough. <laughs> because think about it, if all of us just share nice words and nice posts, and, but nobody is actually doing the real work, then do you think this is very efficient? It helps, but it's not enough. So what you can do? You can, you know, do some beach cleaning when you had the opportunity. When you see some trash around, you can pick it up. And you can volunteer. There are organizations and projects out there you can volunteer with them. Or if you cannot do any of these things, you can donate. You can donate, you can pick up an organization which you believe in, or a project. Or you can join the Patreon community of Beauty and Earth family as well. And the idea is together to do something efficient. So again, I hope you find this information useful, this video useful. I created it from the heart and I hope you learned something in it today. So if you enjoy it, if you find it useful, if you find value in this video, please consider to subscribe to it and please give a like and write a comment below. You know, it's really surprising how you know many people are watching the stuff, but not many people are commenting and interact with it. I think it's good to give something back as well. So if you really want to help this video so more people to receive the information, please give a like, share it, leave a comment if you have any opinions. That really helps, you know, the algorithms and it really helps to spread the message. See you in the next video. Much love. If you are new on this channel and you would like to stay updated, please consider to subscribe. Thank you very much.